But now the world has advanced in technology and it's really important that uh, the learners have those computers. Yeah. That is very interesting and uh, you have well put it. So we're going to be in Africa, which actually has created some very interesting thing to uh, speak about uh, in terms of uh, integration into schools, in terms of the structure, in terms of uh, even fee and accommodation. So first of all, you can introduce yourself just in a brief. Well, uh, my name is Daniel Obare. I'm a software developer. Mm -hmm. uh, the number of uh, experience in the industry. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, that is nice. Also, I'm an IT personnel. So I actually understand all, the whole structure of programming are basically on Python. Sure. So recently you have seen companies like Codris Africa yes. coming into the African continent yes. and actually projecting the idea of coding in a way that will be simple. So first of all, what is coding? Well, uh, before I can actually define the term coding, okay. I'm really happy that today uh, and uh, at this moment that we are discussing about uh, coding and uh, not in Europe, uh, not in the American soil, but here in uh, Africa and uh, maybe specifically in Kenya. Mm -hmm. uh, previously, we have thought of coding as uh, something quite uh, unique and alien. Mm -hmm. But So coding basically is the foundation of uh, majority of technology that we use today. Uh, it's what allows human beings to communicate with the computers. So it's the art of writing instructions for a computer to carry out tasks. Yes. That is very interesting. So basic just instructions set into a computer and actually perform that particular task. Sure. So uh, in terms of programming languages, which are the most language used by these uh, online providers? Well, um, uh, that question, uh, I don't know exactly how to answer it, but I will give you some history uh, because um, uh, previously uh, in the past few years, we had languages such as uh, C++, uh, Pascal, Fortran that have been used extensively, but over the years, okay, thank you. Well, that is very interesting to know some of the of the programming languages. So basically, when I see a language, it's about communicating from one end to another. So basically, if you speak English, Spanish, or French, or even Swahili, it's about it's a matter of making people understand yourself. Also in programming, the same thing happens. You must communicate to the end user, making sure this something happens. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna go to the next. And which is about what are the basic requirements for somebody now to learn from these providers? Um, mm -hmm. So, well, I will say one uh, the most needed requirement mm -hmm. uh, is curiosity. Uh, before I can mention the other aspects of uh, to learn coding, uh, if you have uh, the urge to solve a problem. Uh, then you are ready to do coding. Uh, because coding literally comes in when you are looking for a way uh, to solve a problem. And uh, in that case, uh, in a digital way, maybe you want a computer to do something and you are thinking a way in which uh, you can do it. So, for instance, uh, let me give an example of what is happening in the market. Uh, today, we have uh, cabs uh, in the transport sector where if I want to move from this point to point B, I will just uh, go into my phone, request for a cab, and it will deliver me. It means that uh, somebody thought of a problem, which was a problem uh, in navigation, and they came up with a solution. Then the people who created this application, they are coders. So uh, that is where we begin. You need to have the enthusiasm to solve problems, and then... Uh, now we can go now to, to the technicalities. That is, uh, coding is done on a computer. So you need a computing infrastructure. Uh, in most cases, you will also need some internet connection. And uh, in that case, yeah, I think uh, the most important thing here is uh, you need a computer and internet connection. And when I talk of a computer, uh, maybe we can talk of uh, from the basic laptops that we have to complex systems. Okay. So that is very nice. There's something about uh, computing and the internet. So you have said somebody needs a computer yes. and also an internet. Right. So it means uh, the mode of teaching will be online, not uh, as, the, as the normal traditional way of teaching whereby kids stay in the class, the teacher comes in and teaches. How is it like? Uh, well, mm -hmm. uh, I, I guess you're asking me in terms of um, 
the coding curriculums that are now in existence, right? Mm -hmm. So actually, to put it right way, yes. so basically, if you go in a normal class setting, for example, if you're back in, high, in primary, yes. you can go in class and read where the teacher teaches you, but you find you have said something about computers, you? Yes. as a basic requirement where somebody needs to log into a particular entity to learn yes. now. So basically, which term makes us in terms of the online learning as a method of teaching? All right, all right. Mm -hmm. Well, I won't say that it is 100% uh, online. Uh, because even previously, when uh, computers were not that popular, coding was taught using books, uh, and even the teachers would write the code on the blackboard, and uh, the learners will also write some code on the uh, on the books. I was reading a story of a NASA scientist who has compiled code in quite a number of books that you can pile up to the roof, and uh, that is a good case scenario. So, uh, Coding, literally, it, it is not necessarily that you have to have a computer to learn coding. Because, uh, theoretically, you can learn coding without uh, even a computer. But now, practically, you need a computer uh, to make those code run. So, first, uh, maybe the most important thing is to have the learning resources, uh, just like we learn in mathematics. Uh, we begin 1 plus 1 is equals to 2. So, so in coding, uh, for you to even write a hello world program, you may write it on a piece of paper. Then you advance to now uh, keying in the values to a computer and now actually seeing the output as it should. Uh, so, but now the world has advanced in technology and it is really important that uh, the learners have those computers. Yeah. That is very interesting and uh, you have well put it. So we're going to talk about the, tar uh, the targeted edge group. So basically, if you go to the Codris Africa our website, you'll find they're targeting the uh, teenage, teens from the age of 6 to 17. So compared to uh, back in the days when we had no this particular platform, you find somebody, first of all, graduate from high school, then goes to the university to do that particular coding. So in your experience as a person working in I ICT, what can you leverage in that? Uh, well, I, I should say that... Uh the age group of learning coding has significantly dropped, especially in Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, previously, the domain of coding was uh, a reserve for the tertiary education. Uh, most of the current uh, computer experts in the African market, they began coding. Uh, okay, when I say that, including me, uh, we began coding uh, later. That is, uh, you enter college, that is when now you're introduced to coding and uh, you realize, wow, so there's this skill that I can learn and do ABCD. And uh, then you realize, wow, I wish I knew this earlier. But uh, 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 in the essence, uh, I find it important that uh, coding be done as early as possible. And I like giving the analogy of uh, mathematics as a subject. I believe also coding can be a subject. And it should be taught just the way we begin uh, teaching mathematics to learners of very small age, including the kindergarten. I believe uh, we should also do the same with coding. Because uh, the more you do it, the better you become. They say that experience is the best teacher. So these learners, if we facilitate them to have uh, materials that is relevant to their age group, then I don't see what is restricting even a five-year-old to learn coding. Yeah, as long as they can uh, begin uh, writing small commands, yeah. uh, then I believe that uh, they can do something with coding. And that is very interesting. And actually, because of spoken about the, the teenhood and uh, the early introduction to coding maybe may increase their uh, upskill in terms of programming. So basically, from, uh, from these online providers of coding, what are the most uh, top five skills that a learner can get from those particular sites? Well, uh Coding uh, provides very fundamental skills mm -hmm. uh, to learners. Okay. Uh, I began by saying that uh, for you to begin coding, you need to have the, uh, the urge to solve problems. One of the most important skills that one learns from coding is uh, you become a problem solver. Mm -hmm. It makes you a critical thinker uh, in the sense that, uh, you see, the way algorithms uh, are structured, it's not just a one plus one thing. You'll need to think through a problem and in the same manner convert it to a language that the computer can understand. This comes with even the analytical skills. You analyze a problem, 
uh, you are able to think through it critically. Uh, and uh, at some point, you will need to organize your your problems into algorithms and even pseudocodes. So in that event, there are some thinking uh, models that will will be uh, will be initiated in the learner's process of thinking. Uh, by the way, statistics shows that uh, coders are uh, quite uh, bright people. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Problem solving. It's one of the entities. If you go in any company for an interview, for accounting, for any job in particular, you must have some a problem solving skill. Yes. That actually uh, gives you another leverage in getting that particular job. Yeah. So basically, you're going to go about the career pathway. So now I've, I've gotten the problem solving skills. What are the career pathways in coding? Uh, well, uh, allow me to just uh, mm-hmm. demonstrate the importance of coding before I can even uh, mention the careers that uh, are enshrined in the computing world. Okay. Uh, well, uh, let's talk of a doctor uh, who learns coding. Today, when you go to the hospital, uh, you find big machines, huge machines. Some of them, they are quite scary. A good example is the MRI machine that is used for diagnosis. Uh, literally, the, com- uh, the hospital environment has turned out to be like a computer laboratory where uh, what was meant for a human doctor to do, um, machines are actively doing it. All these machines are running on code. So a doctor who understands how coding works has a better position to understand how to use that technology to better diagnose a patient and even to uh, better serve the patients. So I want to say that coding is a cross-cutting uh, skill that can benefit a pilot, can benefit a doctor, can benefit a teacher. It can even uh, benefit the hoteliers in the hotel industry. But now uh, it will uh, be a, a highly valuable skill to now those who advance even further to careers in the uh, computer world. One of the automatic fields that a coder becomes is a software engineer. Software engineers create applications. Mm -hmm. They are able to create systems, information systems. If you go to the airport, there's an information system that runs the entire airport. That one was designed by software engineers. Uh, To some extent, we can refer to them software developers. Okay. Uh, we also have data analysts, mm-hmm. database administrators. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have machine learning engineers. Mm-hmm. We have DevOps engineers. Mm-hmm. We, we cannot finish the list. Uh, I think uh, there are quite a number of fields that require mm-hmm. coding skills and, uh, in, in big ways. Yeah, okay. that is very, very important to know. And uh, I believe the introduction of this particular coding in Africa will actually boost and actually enhance the competitive competition edge in a way that we shall have more software engineers, more people with creative uh, solution into the problem that actually happening day to day. Mm-hmm. So basically to the last question, what is your advice to an African parent who has a kid at home, has a laptop, or doesn't have a laptop? What is your message to them? Well, um, I would advise parents to uh, to teach their kids coding, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I like the conversation that uh, we are now having uh, active conversation in terms of incorporating coding in the main curriculum. Mm-hmm. I think this is the right time to do it. Maybe we are a few days late. Mm-hmm. Maybe it should have been done yesterday. Mm-hmm. But the fact that uh, the conversation is already there, okay. uh, it's really encouraging. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would mm-hmm. want to advise uh, parents, especially mm-hmm. parents of uh, uh, both primary and secondary school uh, kids, mm-hmm. that uh, the future is technology. Okay. I don't foresee a situation where we are going to run out of need of technology. Okay. We can only need more of technology mm-hmm. in our daily lives. Mm-hmm. We have already seen uh, artificial intelligence taking over in some fields. Mm-hmm. Uh, even in the industries that we never imagined. Mm-hmm. Like I never imagined a lawyer mm-hmm. will one day be uh, in the... Uh, in competing with technology. Okay. I can assure you that currently there is a fully functional robot. Mm. Uh, let me call it an AI robot. Yeah. That can defend mm-hmm. uh, somebody in courts and it can uh, win a case. So this is uh, mind boggling. And uh, this means that uh, the more technology advances, the more we will need more technology experts. 
and the more other industries will rely on technology. So anybody who will be having good skill in uh, terms of technology, and I said coding powers all kinds of technology. So coding is a key skill in terms of technology. So let parents teach their kids uh, coding. Okay, that is very, very intriguing. And actually, there's something about my dad. Uh, before even I went to uh, learn coding, or uh, actually know how, how the digital world works, he was actually struggling, putting things here and there. And actually, when I went into coding and actually knew something, even fixing the television, putting a Zoom call, simple things yes. actually solve so pro- many problems at home. And actually, even now, my dad is actually proud. And actually, Dan is very, very, I'm very, very hard. It's called what? Thankful for you being here and sharing your experience as an ICT person. And actually, thank you. What is your last tech to the audience and to the viewer? Oh, well, mm-hmm. uh, thank you, Mohanji, for okay. having me on board today. Uh-huh. I just want to encourage anyone who may want to, maybe you are a career in Bangia that uh, you want to, to create, mm-hmm. yet you don't have maybe the capacity to pay a software developer to implement for you. Mm-hmm. If you dedicate <coughs> six months from now mm-hmm. uh, to learn coding, Mm-hmm. Uh, you can actually get it yourself. Okay. So in uh, technology, mm-hmm. uh, there's never an end in learning mm-hmm. and uh, it's never too late. Okay. So I would wish to encourage our audience, all mm-hmm. of them, to join us in the technology mm-hmm. field and also to facilitate those around them, especially the, the uh, things. So from the created studios, we're we saying thank you for coming here and actually a handshake. Thank you for being here and actually start now. My name is Amun. I'll see you soon. Yes.